Hi everyone and welcome to this narrated time lapse of my pastel painting of Baxter the cat. If you like this and would be interested in seeing more in-depth tutorials of how I painted Baxter, do check out my Patreon channel. I'll put some links in the description below. I'll have lots of full-length tutorials coming from this piece very soon. And there are already lots of tutorials there to keep you busy. But if you haven't already, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. I have lots of bonus content that I put out here too. So enjoy Baxter the Cat. So I make a start on the background first and I photographed Baxter the cat sitting up on top of the back of a sofa next to some lovely window lighting so you get good side lighting on his face which is really going to help when I come to paint it. But I love creating these backgrounds using the glow of all the colours reflecting off the walls inside the room. And it was my first time trying to do that on pastel mat. And I was very pleased with how the colours layered up. Yet you could still see all of the colours through the different layers. So it gives a lovely glow to the walls. And with the sofa, I tried to keep it pretty simple. Go for a little bit of detail in around where his paw is. But for the rest, it's just a lot of blocking in and in some places making use of the texture of the pastel matte paper to give that leathery effect. And a little bit of detail just going into some of the creases. So a lot of colours already and I'll try to bring some of those colours that I've used in the background into Baxter's fur. But the first thing I do is start to work on some edges especially on that bright side of his face just to pick out the outline of his head And I also like to spend a lot of time tweaking those edges and I use pastel pencil to do that. Most of the time I'm using the big sticks to lay down my main colour. I love soft pastel sticks. I use mainly unison. And you get such a vibrance and strength of pigment from the soft pastels. But then I do use blenders and pastel pencils to come in and add extra details and tweak those bigger marks that I've made using the sticks. So I'll hopefully make some in-depth tutorials on cat's eyes. I'll be able to focus in on these areas and show you in real detail how I created this. But you can still get a good sense of the process from the time-lapse version. In cat's eyes I always find so tricky that long diamond shape in the centre. Its placement is so important to get both the character of the cat and also the direction that they're looking. I always find cats are so much trickier than dogs. I seem to be able to capture dogs' eyes and faces in general a lot more easily than cats. And I know a few of you have said the same and you're interested to see some slow down footage from this piece. But I've always taken much longer at cats' eyes much harder to get their exact character. I think it's because they've got such big open eyes and Baxter especially he's quite an unusual cat. He's a 
British Grey. And he's a big softy. He's so gentle and playful. And after a little bit of reluctance at the start, as you normally get with most animals when you go to photograph them, he started to pose like an absolute pro. And I got some fantastic photo reference from this one day. And lots of that photo reference will be shared next month on my Patreon channel. We're going to have a month devoted to painting cats, starting off with Baxter. So you can see that I'm saving my white and lighter tones for that left side of his face. Then I've really got to think about the colours that I use on that shadow side. A lot of different colours went into creating this grey tone. Both cool blues and lilacs as well as warm, fleshy brown colours, just to keep some warmth in it. His coat isn't a really cold, steely grey, so I want to be careful to still make it seem really warm. Even in the whiter areas, I've added in little touches of very pale yellows and brown earths. Again, just to keep that lovely warmth of his coat. So the main thing that I'm thinking of are my colour choices. It's so important, whether you're going for a photorealistic outcome or even something more expressionistic. It's your colour choices that will make the work really pop. And it's tricky. I'm really having to think about what colours my eye can actually see in the shadows and how that compares to my sunlit side. Constantly comparing the two sides of the face, making sure that I don't use any highlights that are too bright within the shadow areas. And once you start training your eye about colour theory and about being able to recognise more subtle tones, then it opens up a whole new world in your painting. And you can start to play with colour more, pushing values further. I do try and bring in quite lively colours, uh, nice vibrant lilacs. But this was quite a muted palette. I really wanted to capture Baxter's coat just how it is and not push those colours too much. So working on the, down the body, I use those smaller marks with the bigger pastels and I block them in in such a way that it describes the shape of Baxter, the texture of his fur. Again, saving those brightest highlights for down that left hand side. And then I've got to think about how I can gradiate the light from left to right across his chest. It doesn't just abruptly go from sunlit to shadow in a straight line. There's an area in the middle where I have to really think about what colours to use. But you can see that everything I'm using in the more shadowed areas is much more muted. And I'm also blending the marks softly into the layers below, which just softens the whole fur effect. I've been working really hard on pastel mat to try and get a softer effect. And I think I'm really pleased with how this one has turned out. So those dreaded whiskers, no one likes this part. <laughs> And I've slowed it down a little bit, but I really took my time on these. Planned where each whisker was going to go, where my hand needed to go to make the mark. In some cases, I took a little practice run without making the mark, just to make the movement in my arm. 
So I really tried not to mess them up. I can come back in and tweak a little bit at them. But I was quite pleased with his Dali-esque whiskers. <laughs> and it's just a good sharp pastel pencil for that job. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm available for commissions. You can check out my website in the description below for more details. Also, if you'd like to learn the pastel, don't forget to check me out over on Patreon and be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube for all my future videos.